Welcome in to the New Orleans Saints podcast, hosted by Aaron Summers and John DeShazer. You'll hear from players, coaches, broadcasters, and writers who cover the team on a daily basis. The New Orleans Saints podcast starts right now. Here's your hosts, Aaron Summers and John DeShazer. Moving on to Tampa, excited about the opportunity. Um, I'm sure you guys are all going to be wondering who's going to be the quarterback. Spencer Rattler will be the quarterback uh, for this game. We talked a lot as a staff about what we felt like was the best thing for us and give us the best chance to win the game. Um, that was the decision that uh, you know we made. Um, and we're excited about him getting an opportunity to go in there and we'll let him go play and see what he can do. Welcome into the New Orleans Saints podcast. I'm Aaron Summers. I'm going to go ahead and give this one to head coach Dennis Allen for the news of the day as we found out that quarterback Spencer Rattler will be starting in place of quarterback Derek Carr, who is out this weekend at least and week to week with an oblique injury. It goes against us, you know, on the show team every every day. And, um, you know, he's 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 got athletic ability and throw the ball. Um, he's accurate. You know, he, 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 he creates some plays on the scout team. So um, I just think this is a guy that, you know, he has a lot of ability and, and certainly, you know, he's a rookie. So um, we know that we're going to have, you know, some challenges that go along with that. But I think we'll have a good plan for him and uh, we'll, be, uh, we'll be excited about going out and playing. While Carr was the injury news of the day, there were eight other players who did not participate in Wednesday's practice. Wednesday was a little bit lighter practice, a walkthrough with the shortened week. They condensed the schedule a little bit and, and wanted to give the players a little bit more time for their bodies to rest and recover. As head coach Dennis Allen pointed out, that is the biggest key to success on Sunday. Along with Carr being out, it was Alvin Kamara, Peyton Turner, Cesar Ruiz, Taysom Hill, Lucas Patrick, Will Harris, Pete Werner, and Rashid Shaheed who did not participate. Willie Gay, linebacker, who has been dealing with that hand injury, was a limited participant, so that's some good news. And then running back Kendra Miller has been designated for return. He was on IR with the hamstring injury, but was a full participant on Wednesday. Now I'm going to bring in our senior Saints writer, John DeShazer, for some insight into the quarterback change. J.D., obviously the news of the day is the fact that Dennis Allen did not hesitate at all, and he named quarterback Spencer Rattler as the starter for this game Sunday. What are your initial thoughts about, A, them going ahead and just naming somebody, and then the fact that it is Rattler? Well, I thought, I was pretty sure he would play Coy all through the week, to be honest with you. I thought they would just you know do the subterfuge thing and not name a quarterback really until you start the game because you want to make Tampa Bay as confused as you possibly can and make them have to prepare for two quarterbacks. Uh, but to go immediately with Spencer Adler mean, to me means this team said, look, we got a job to do and we need to be serious about it. And it doesn't really matter if people know or not. We've got the confidence in Spencer to go out and do the job. So it doesn't matter if we name him on Wednesday or if we name him on Friday or Saturday. Whatever it is, he's going to be the quarterback and he needs to know publicly that he's the quarterback. Right. How much confidence does that give Spencer knowing that he's named the guy? It's been said publicly that he is the guy. Just knowing going into this week that it's his job. A ton of it. Because think about it. He's been the third quarterback the first four games. Mm -hmm. First, Yeah, first five games, excuse me. He's been the third quarterback. So he really hadn't even been the backup. And then to, I guess, there's no other way to frame it ex except that he leapfrogs Jake Hayner yeah. to go into the starting spot when Jake Hayner's been the backup, been, been the number two quarterback the first five games. So it has to give him a ton of confidence, but it speaks to, one, what we saw in preseason and training camp obviously mm -hmm. was not you know a mirage. What we saw was real. And two, it also speaks to the work he's put in since the season started because you know one of the things Dennis Allen referenced was that he's done great on the show team. Uh, he's shown mobility. He's got. We know he's got a great arm. Anybody who's seen him throw the ball knows he's got a great arm, but he's got the mobility. And two, and we heard this from Connor McGovern in the center, he's got that moxie. He's got that that, that mm -hmm. swag. He's got maybe got that it factor. Will it play on the field? We we've yet to see that because he hadn't played an NFL game. But to you got to have it in order for it to show on the on the field. You got to have that confidence in yourself and your abilities for it to manifest on the field. So he seems to have that, and the team seems to like what they seen from him. We kind of saw a little bit of it in Arizona preseason game. Yeah, I mean he looked he looked good in his preseason games. He played you know all of them. He looked. It didn't look like the moment was too big for him. Even when he didn't play well, he came back 
and made up for whether it's in practice or the next preseason game. So he showed that, you know, it, the moment just doesn't look too big for him. And he's got a huge arm, and I'm sure, you know, I'm sure that Chris Olave and Rashid Shaheed are pretty pleased about mm-hmm. that part of it because those guys want to get deep and they can get deep. And so to have a quarterback who can throw it out there and, you know, the, the question now is, can can Rashid Shaheed be overthrown? Well, we're going to see. Because, <laughs> because Rattler, can, he can turn it loose. Now, hopefully, the second part of that equation is, you have to have time to turn it loose. Mm-hmm. He can't turn it loose if he's on his backside. So hopefully the offensive line can protect him. But even if they can't protect him as well as you want him to, that's where the mobility comes in. He might be able to create some plays and some space by himself. We know Derek Carr can move around, but you know Derek's a little reluctant to go ahead and take off with the ball. Well, I don't think Spencer will be. He's a young quarterback, mm-hmm. and if his first or maybe even second option, maybe his first and second options aren't there, maybe even the first one, he might just take off if he sees a crease. And those five yards are as good as any other five yards, or those seven yards, because what you want to stay out of is the third and nines and you yeah. know, the second and twelve and those kinds of things you want to get into the you know the second and six you want to get into the third and twos and if it takes for him to run and scramble a little bit to get there he looks like he's willing to do that because he's willing to do it in the preseason sure so head coach Dennis Allen said that they spent a lot of time internally looking at this specific matchup against the Bucks and who would be their best option at quarterback you mentioned a couple things with his arm and his ability to scramble is, is that just kind of what it came down to? I think the scramble is is probably as much as anything. That's not to say that Jake Hayner can't scramble, but I think I think with Rattler, he's got that scramble. And I I, I loathe saying this, but I'm going to say it. You know, when when Patrick Mahomes scrambles and, and creates a little space, he can still unleash it for you know 50, 60 yards down the field. Right. I think Rattler has that capability to not I don't want to compare him to Patrick Mahomes in any way shape or form because Patrick Mahomes is a current Hall of Famer right now and a (laughs) three-time Super Bowl champ but I think Spencer Rattler can buy some time and if you got the receivers on the same page with you in the scramble drill it can mean some really good things and we've seen those kinds of plays happen against the Saints Jalen Hurts uh, Patrick Mahomes we've seen quarterbacks be able to stay alive and get into the scramble drill and make some some chunk plays against the Saints. Hopefully the same can happen for the Saints with Rattler at quarterback. Well, apparently it's happened when he's been on the scout team. Yeah, and it's one of those things where, you know, the scout team, yeah, you're running the other team's stuff, but you're going to have to improvise some because you're on the scout team. If you're on the scout team, you're playing against your defensive number ones. Your defensive number ones are better than the scout team offensive linemen. They are. So they're going to apply pressure. And so in those cases, he obviously has been able to escape and create some big plays, some explosives. And that's what they see hopefully will happen in this game against Tampa Bay. All right. For whatever reason, this fan base was in love with Spencer Rattler from the beginning. When he got drafted, they were clamoring for him during the offseason. Now they get to see him start a game in the Superdome against the division team. Well, part of that was this fan base has, has not, I don't think embraced properly Derek Carr. Mm-hmm. And and I don't I don't care what people say. If you if you give me a quarterback who in the last five games of the season the team goes four and one, he has fourteen touchdowns and two interceptions, I'm gonna take those numbers. If you told me Patrick Mahomes did that, if you told Kansas City Patrick Mahomes did that, people would be doing backflips. Derek Carr does it and the folks here are like you got to have another quarterback. Well, hold on. Those are <laughs> those are really nice numbers. And even this season, Derek Carr's completing 70% of his passes, yeah. eight touchdowns, two interceptions. It's not like Derek Carr is playing like garbage. Derek Carr has had some nice, nice, efficient games. But folks like the new toy, and Spencer Rattler mm-hmm. is the new toy, and he's the guy, and he, you know, he, he, Dropped some in the draft for whatever reason, but everybody sees the physical abilities. And so, you you know, then people start daydreaming, you know, he's QB one. He's going to be the, you know, the next quarterback of this franchise for 10 years. Folks, let me tell you something. In a perfect world, in a, in a perfect world, if if things go as the Saints hope they go, Spencer Rattler 
probably won't play a whole lot because mm-hmm. Derek Carr will be playing well. And if the team's successful, then that's what you want. You don't want your backups to have to play. But in this situation, everybody is dying to see him, um, see him unwrap in a regular season situation. And I hope their expectations aren't just through the roof ridiculous because it's going to be a first start. It's going to be against a really good Tampa Bay defense with a really good head coach slash defensive coordinator in Todd Bowles who's got really good schemes and has been doing this for a while. So if he doesn't play well or if he doesn't have the game you think he's going to have, obviously I don't think fans are going to throw in the towel on him, but I, I don't want the expectations to be so ridiculous that it's impossible to be lived up to because this team is still in a situation where they still got a lot of folks hurt. Yeah. And this is a a defense first team, I still believe. And this defense needs to get back on track. It was on very good track the first four games. So it took Kansas City to somewhat expose what the Saints were doing defensively or how the Saints couldn't really corral them offensively. But I think this team is still defensive centered. And, and look, I'd be more, I think, I hope the fan base will be more than satisfied if this team wins a 17 to 14 game and Spencer Rattler throws for 120 yards and they win the game anyway. <laughs> yeah. Because the ob- objective is to win the game. But I get it. People have been, they've been pining about Spencer Rattler since the day he was drafted. Is really prop well. I say they shouldn't get there. It's going to be impossible to live up to the expectations that the fan base has because they already have placed him on a pedestal that he probably should not have been placed on to begin with. But I get the enthusiasm. I get looking at the sterling, sparkling athletic ability. Mm-hmm. I get when you see that arm. I mean, he's got a golden arm, and look. When he first got here, that golden arm, and you just didn't know where the ball was going to go. Yeah. <laughs> in OTAs, it was more likely, it was just as likely to go to a defender as it was to, to one of his teammates on offense. And then we've seen the progression. Though. Mm-hmm. We've seen the, the the gains that have been pretty significant where, okay, he looks like he's got a pretty good grasp of what they're doing. He looks like he can run this offense. And it went to that from... You know, Spencer Rattler thinks he can just throw it in any window and you can't do that in the NFL. Yeah. Well, now he's he looks like he's got a better understanding of how you have to attack NFL defenses in the windows and those kinds of things. So I'm looking forward to it. I mean, yeah. I can you know, the fan base is enthused and I think there's a reason for everybody to be enthused because you get a chance, whatever happens, to see a bit of what he can do. If it's only a one game test run, then, you know, so be it. If it's several games and, you know, we don't know how long Derek Carr is going to be out. But if it's several games and you get several games because Dennis Allen says, look, we're not putting him in to take him out after he makes a bad play. Right. We're going to put him in so he can play. So he's going to have ample opportunities to be able to show that he can run this offense. Spencer Rattler is going to get his opportunity. <laughs> However, This is not to be confused with the fact that the starting job is still quarterback Derek Carr's, and when he comes back from injury, he will resume that role. Yeah, I mean, and it's been clear since the day Derek Carr stepped in the building that he was going to be the Saints starting quarterback. Yeah. There has been no deception about that. There's been no, well, if Derek gets hurt and somebody plays well and then, you know, we might have a, have a question mark. No, Derek Carr is the starting quarterback of this team. And if he's out for three games and Spencer Rattler goes 3-0, and that's a great job, Spencer. Mm-hmm. That's what you're supposed to do. That's what everybody envisioned you do. That's what everybody hoped you do. But Derek Carr is going to come back in. He's going to start so you know i think nobody should be deceived by that the head coach says that's going to be our quarterback the pay scale says that's going to be our quarterback (laughs) the history and the numbers you know the productivity says that's going to be the saints quarterback so it is what it is it is going to be a fun matchup this weekend as you take on the tampa bay bucks you brought up something that our guest today linebacker scott shanley former linebacker super bowl champ brought up he said that the success of this team has to come down to the defense and they need to step up, especially in the situation now with the quarterback change, the injuries on the offensive line that, that he is basically calling out the defense for this game on Sunday. So going to go ahead and get into that interview with Scott Shanley, break down a little bit of that Kansas city game, and then look forward to this Tampa Bay matchup on Sunday. Scott, thanks for joining me on the New Orleans Saints podcast. I didn't get to talk to you after the Kansas City game, uh, so I want to start there. How are you doing? And then I need your initial impressions from that game as well. Yeah, obviously, I, I, I going into the game, I 
really thought the Saints could could win in a tough environment. I like the matchups. Um, specifically, I like the Saints secondary against the Chiefs wide receiver, the big wide receiver core. So I was a little surprised. Um, probably frustrated, just like most Saints fans, that, that that game, you know, it really never felt like the Saints ever got control at any point in the game. The, the big bomb to Rashid for the touchdown, you felt like you were cl- clawing your way back into the game. But Kansas City just did a really good job of controlling the line of scrimmage. Um, Mahomes had his probably best game of the year. They were able to find Kelsey. So I think those types of things were frustrating. But, I mean, there's a reason why that team has won a lot of championships. They, they're they good at everything they do. And, and uh, you know, when you play them as an opponent, you can't beat yourself. And, unfortunately, turning the football over and those types of things, it's a tough place to, to, to play and win doing, doing things that hurt you. Sure. Well, the Eagles and Kansas City now, they both seem like they've really focused in on stopping the run. And the Saints had a really difficult time getting their run game going Monday night. How do you counteract that? What can you do as an offense to make sure that you can get Alvin Kamara some more yards? He only had 26 total on 11 carries. Yeah, no mistake. Like the first two weeks of the season when the Saints offense was rolling, um, we pointed out a lot of times it was because the running game was going. Yeah. Um, you know, there's some factors that are, that are factoring into the last couple, couple, um, you know, you alluded to the Philadelphia game and then the Chiefs game. I think the biggest thing you have is you, you have some injuries in the O line. Obviously, you lost McCoy in that Philadelphia game and you're facing a really good defensive tackle. So, um, I think it's a combination of the Saints offensive line is a little bit depleted and they're going against really good defensive line. I mean, Jones from Kansas City is probably the best defensive lineman in the game. Um, they're really good in the front. And so it was really hard to get control of the line of scrimmage. But, you know, there's going to be games where you just don't like the matchups with your O-line versus the D-line. So how do you counteract that? Um, I'd like to see more of the screen game. I, I don't think you saw as many screens to Alvin. Getting him in space in the passing game, I think, is how you kind of counteract those really good defensive linemen who are stuffing you in the run game. It did seem like, and quarterback Derek Carr talked about this after the game, that they felt like those big long balls would be there. The deep throw to Rashid Jaheed obviously hit for a 43-yard touchdown, but they attempted a lot more than just that. When you see that on film, but it's not necessarily translating in the game. How do you balance what you wanted to do going in and what you're actually seeing while you're out there? Yeah, I mean that's that's the part of part of the NFL game that I really like, and people who like the NFL over the college football or or any other level of football. It's it's the constant chess match that goes back and forth between um, you know players on the field who are doing in their individual battles, whether it's a corner versus a wide receiver or a linebacker versus a tight end or a de- defensive end versus a tackle. There's constant mini games within the game, but also as a coaching staff, you, you, you know, all week long you say, these are the areas of this team we're going to attack. And then when it doesn't go the way you want it to go, what's your backup plan for that? What's plan B or plan C? And I think those are the teams who, who are able to do that on the fly and, and constantly have players who can adjust on the fly you have that type of success. I I agree. I think going in the game, again, I like the matchup with the Saints wide receivers versus the Chiefs defensive secondary. Um, Unfortunately, the Saints just didn't make some of those deep plays because they were there. They were there, you know, early in the game. Um, Turning the football over was was not ideal, especially on the road. You get the the Chiefs fan base into it, Mm -hmm. um, everything you don't want to happen. But then later on in the game, you hit Rashid on that deep ball. And, and, you know, I think a lot of people, if you're a Saints fan, you're thinking, here we go. It's now a game. So, um, you know, I think the Saints need to keep being aggressive on offense. I definitely think that the more aggressive they are, we saw at weeks one and two, the better results they have. Defensively, the Saints have always wanted to be aggressive as well. They play a lot of man, but against Kansas City, it looked like they played more zone in this one. Did I see that right? It, it definitely felt like they played more zone. And, um, you know, early in the game, probably a little too much zone because Travis Kelsey is the dearest I've ever seen in the NFL. I've watched a lot of games as finding the open zones and you can be in cover two or cover three or cover four. He's going to find the open zone. And it's really tough when he's on the same wavelength with his quarterback. Um, and I think a little bit is some inexperience at linebacker. You didn't have Pete out there playing or, or Willie. And, and I think Anthony, I think Orgy is a really good player. I think he's going to be a really good player in this league, very athletic. But it, it's, it is hard to go against an Andy Reid offense if you're an inexperienced linebacker because, you know, I'll go all the way back to when he was with the Eagles. I mean, Andy's going to take advantage of those short and medium range routes, and he's going to work over linebackers. So I think a little bit, a lot of that combination of those things happened early in the game. The Saints finally settled down, played a little bit more man. But, yeah, I think the Chiefs were really good at going in zone defense and finding those open slots. When you have somebody like cornerback Paulson Adebo, who does have two interceptions on the year, 
eight pass deflections, but he is getting these penalties that are for huge gains for the offense. How do you manage that? And, and what's the fine line in making sure you're not getting called? It's tough because some weeks, officials, there's going to be some officials who let you play, and there's going to be some officials who think that every time a defensive back breathes on a receiver, it's pass interference. And so you have to know kind of what crew you have that week, who's, who's watching you. But, you know, I think DA said it. You know, when you get a couple of those penalties, teams are watching film and you're just going to get more more attempts at you. And obviously playing the opposite Marshall and Lattimore, you're going to get a ton of attempts anyway. But I think a lot of teams are, you know, once they see a DB commit a couple penalties in previous weeks, they're like, okay, let's see if we can get one of those, take some shots. So I think the most important thing, Paulson's a really good player. He's been a highly productive player in the NFL. Um, he's going to get more attempts because of the recent penalties, but I don't think he doesn't have to panic. There should be no panic in his play because he can run. I mean, he was running strike for strike with Xavier Worthy. He ran a four two one at the combine. He can run with anybody. It's just not panicking once the ball gets there. I think he'll be fine. But um, you know, he, he just has to know that he's going to get more attempts thrown his way. Mm-hmm. Patrick Mahomes is one of one. He's somebody that it looked like he was running all over the field, but at the end of the game, he only had 22 yards rushing because he was just moving side to side and extending these plays. That's going to be difficult, but we're probably not going to see somebody that can do what he does again. So the big takeaway is how do you get, make sure that the quarterback doesn't have that much time? And then from there, these chunk plays that we keep seeing the defense allow, how do you eliminate those? Well, I think it's kind of a catch-22. When you play a guy like Mahomes, um, you know, I like the matchups that we had defensively against their offense. But, you know, I, I likened it a lot to the way the Saints matched up with Tom Brady when he was in Tampa Bay. But then, you know, the one factor you have to uh, account for is Mahomes has much better legs than Brady. Brady's not going to run the ball. So that was the, the X factor, Mahomes' ability to escape, extend plays, um, you know, I thought it was interesting, you know, Bill Belichick is doing the Manning cast with the, with the Manning brothers. And he kept talking about, um, you know, don't let Mahomes step up in the pocket. He kept getting these step up lanes, these clear lanes in the a gap to step up and find his receivers in the middle of the field. So I thought it was an interesting point by him because he's a guy that you want to keep in the pocket, but you don't want him to step up in the a gap. So it's a, it's kind of thing. If you're going to bring pressure, you almost bring pressure up the middle of the field, but he's just, he's so good at eluding that initial pressure, stepping up and finding his guys that he's, there's a reason why he's in the conversation to be the greatest quarterback of all time at, at such a young age. He just, he's got a knack and an ability and he's in a perfect fit offense. But I think as a defense, you almost have to blitz him a little bit more. He's the lowest blitz quarterback in the NFL. I think it's almost a little feast or famine. You're going to get burned a little bit, but you're also going to create pressure and make him throw the ball before he wants to. Mm -hmm. All right, Tampa Bay is up next. So what are you seeing from quarterback Baker Mayfield? He's been efficient, 11 touchdowns, only two interceptions. Yeah, Baker Mayfield has given hope to every every highly drafted quarterback that has been released (laughs) or been benched that, that they can resurrect their career. And he's done really an outstanding job. This is his fourth stop. Browns, Panthers, Rams. And now he's resurrected his career. He's he's their franchise quarterback. He's been playing really good football. I thought it was interesting um, when I watched the Falcons game and he went down briefly. He had an injury with his knee, sprained his knee. And the amount of guys who ran over there to check on him, his teammates, his offensive teammates, to pick him up and to walk with him to the sideline, the the concern they had for him, they know they're not going anywhere. I thought that was extremely telling of how they felt about Baker as their quarterback. And, um, he, he brought me life to, to that organization because anytime you have a guy like Tom Brady walk out the door, everybody's kind of thinking, okay, yeah. now we got, we're going to be in this endless cycle of who's our next quarterback. And luckily for them, Baker Mayfield picked it up, picked up, and uh, they've been winning a lot of games since Brady's left. That matchup between Marshawn Lattimore and Mike Evans is always a fun one. Do you think we're going to see them actually throw in Marshawn's direction? Because we haven't seen a lot of it this year. Yeah, I think just with uh, kind of the male ego, I think they will because <laughs> they're gonna. They're, I think Mike probably has a lot of pride, um, and Baker's there, and, and Baker really hasn't been a part of this Marshawn Mike Evans feud, so he's probably going to try to feed Mike and get him the ball. But at the same time, Marshawn has just shut down Mike Evans like no other corner in the league, and I I think Marshawn is one of those guys who's so talented that he loves the the challenge. And he loves the hype around that matchup that, that he always gets the best of Mike. And there's no doubt they're, they're not just going to avoid him completely. They're going to take some chances, but like Marshawn's got the best of that, that matchup for the past four or five games in a row. 
Yeah. It's a short week for the Saints already with that Monday night football game. And then you add in the fact that it looks like there's going to be a quarterback change here. How do you handle just the short week, the practices getting pushed around, meetings, kind of everything coming together in a smaller amount of time? Well, yeah, it's tough, especially when you have injuries, because you want you want a mini buy or you want these bye weeks at, at the time when you need it most. And it seems like the Saints need it most with all the injuries. But unfortunately, they don't they don't change the schedule. So you got to play the way the way it's constructed. And I, I think you know if I'm in that locker room, and I'm sure the team's talked about it, like it, it's time for the defense, who a lot of people feel like is the strength or was the strength of this team going into the season, to to step up. And you're going to have to hold Tampa Bay under 17 points, under 20 points. You can't expect an offense to go out there with with quarterbacks, whether it's Spencer or Jake, that look at them played a lot of plays. They're going to be good players. They are good players, but they don't have the experience to go out there and just let it rip and throw for 400 yards. You're going to have to run the ball effective. You're going to have to throw screens. You're going to have to run relatively safe plays on offense so they don't turn the football over. Um, and then it's going to be on the defense. I think as a defensive player, you, you're taking it upon your shoulders to say, hey, for the next two games, while these guys get comfortable, we have to do our part and and dominate the offense. Yeah. You were out at training camp. You had a chance to see how Jake Hayner, Spencer Rattler were sharing reps. I mean, they were switching every other day between somebody was going with the twos, somebody was going with the threes. Where do you think that they're at right now? Because obviously the reps go down practice time as the season goes on. You give those to your main guy, both still young quarterbacks. You know, where do you feel like they're at in their ability to just step in and be that starter. Yeah, it, it's tough because um, obviously they wouldn't be in the NFL if they had the NFL ability. I, I, I went out, yeah, out in camp watching those two and things that just jumped off the, the table to me was Jake. Jake's energy. Jake's mm-hmm. uh, energy level is kind of moxie, the way he carries himself. And then you look at Spencer and the ball jump out of his hand and his just raw talent. Um, a lot of those guys, like I said, they, they could be franchise quarterbacks, maybe t- who knows, but it's, it's hard without the game experience, the live game, regular season experience, because it moves at a different pace. They've gotten tons of reps in the preseason. They've gotten reps as scouting quarterbacks throughout. They've faced the Saints defense in practice. But there's a difference from that and then going into live regular season reps. And I think the tough thing for both those guys and whoever plays is, is they're really only getting one week of true practice time for two games because of the short week. So it's going to be a, a huge learning curve and, and they're going to get a ton of, they're going to almost going to get more game reps in the next week and they're probably going to get practice reps and that's crazy, but it's going to be a little bit learning on the job. And that's why I say most of the responsibility falls on the running game and the defense to help these two young guys out in the meantime. With the offensive line being beat up as it is, do you lean towards a quarterback that's more mobile? I, I think having a quarterback who can, who can move, who can make plays with their legs, extend plays. You get in the third and four, third and five, and a defense plays man and nobody's open. You pull the ball down and extend, extend the chains. It, for me, as a defensive player, it's extremely frustrating playing a guy with legs, a guy who can run and keep the chains moving and keep an offense on the field. So, yeah, there's a huge advantage to that. Now, you also have to be able to sit back in the pocket most of the time and, and go through your progression and know what you're getting defensively, what coverage it is, where you're going with the ball. Those things will always – supersede the ability to run but if yeah if you got a guy with with legs who can pull the ball down and, and keep your offense on the field it's extremely frustrating to defenses i gotta get your thoughts on colin saunders and the interception in the end zone and his return for 37 yards because that was definitely a bright spot of that game on monday night it was a lot of fun seeing him and i mean really he saved the game at the one that game could have started to get ugly and that was a huge play in the game he was right there, great hands and great speed. I'm like, okay, where's a linebacker number? And he's moving like a linebacker down the field. He's going to have to ask him to play some linebacker, some stand-up defensive end, maybe move to some fullback. But big guy was moving. It was uh, it was a lot of fun to see. And, and more than that, it was a huge play in the game at the time and kept the Saints in the game. Uh, I'm sure he's got that game ball. There's not going to be a whole lot of defensive lineman interception game balls on his wall, but I'm sure that'll be a memorable one for him, especially against his former team. There's nothing like going against your former team. Yeah, no, he definitely has that game ball. It was his first interception, so he will probably never let that out of his sight. Um, But it was a fun moment for sure. And at that point, you know, it led to another touchdown and, and it made it a game for sure. Tampa Bay, dealing with the storm back home, you know, they're here, they're safe, but Mentally, how does that wear on you knowing that this is going on back home in in your area, maybe a family and friends there, even just the operations, the stadium? I mean, everything that 
could be dealing with the storm of this magnitude? It's, it's definitely tough. I can remember we when we evacuated, we went to Indianapolis and practiced there for a week and, and played the Colts. And it's tough, especially, like you said, you have family um, back home or, or wherever they may be, and you're worried about them. You're safe in, in the hotel where you are, and it's like business as usual. It, but your mind is always somewhere else. So it is definitely tough. It's great that that the, the Bucks had somewhere to go. It's great that the, it seems like they're working together with the Saints on some of the practice stuff. And, um but yeah, there's no doubt as, as a player, I mean, you know, there's different varying ages of guys from 21 to, to 35, 36 years old with families, some not with families, but maybe their parents are back where they were living. So it's tough because your mind, your mind isn't fully on being an NFL football player. It's, it's really about um, being, being part of your family and making sure they're all safe and sound. Yeah, we definitely hope that everybody is as safe as they possibly can be. Looking at this game against Tampa Bay, You've been in plenty of matchups here against them. What do you remember about these games? Because everybody likes to say the Falcons are the Saints' rival, but these Tampa Bay games were just as intense. Well, absolutely. I think the one thing about the Tampa games, um, obviously, like I said, Atlanta is the rival, but it seems like these Tampa games are always split one and one during the season. Rarely do you get uh, a clean sweep. Um, There's been there's been a lot of really good battles and it seems like they're always four quarter games, black and blue type games with a lot of physicality. Um, and I, I don't think this team's going to be any different. I think Tampa Bay is a really physical team. I think the Saints are a physical team. and It's going to come down to probably the team that makes the least amount of mistakes. could be another tight game, but this is a really good team. Todd Bowles has coached his team well. They have uh, two big wins. They, they played Washington and beat them at home and won a game at Detroit. And, and then, you know, they end up beating Philadelphia pretty good and probably should have beat Atlanta, but, but, it was it was hard for me because I was cheering for Atlanta to win because I wanted all these teams at three and two. So <laughs> things have a great opportunity to go three and three, make Tampa three and three, and make it a really close division race. But there's no doubt these these games and these matchups always come down to to the fourth quarter. Yeah, with that overtime game, the Thursday night game between Atlanta and the Bucks, Kirk Cousins was able to do whatever he wanted over 500 yards. Do you think and it's going to be a little different with the quarterback situation here? But you think there's opportunity for the Saints to take advantage of? the Bucks defense in the same way. Yeah. Well, yeah. The, the, the one thing about the NFL is you're going to watch tons of film. You're going to watch exactly what Tampa has done through the first five weeks of the season, kind of what they were still doing in the Atlantic. Their guys are going to go a wholesale change. They're not going to switch to the entire defense. They're still going to do some of the same things. They're just going to try to execute better. So yeah, the Saints are going to take advantage of, of some of those things. Anytime a quarterback throws for 500 yards, I mean, there's definitely weaknesses to be found in that in that defense, and I think right now the Bucks secondary is a little banged up. Antoine Winfield Jr. is, is one of the best safeties in the league. He's a little bit nicked up. Levante David's been a great linebacker in the league for a long time. Uh, he's getting a little bit older, so maybe get Kamara isolated on him in space. So I do think there's definitely matchups. I love the Saints wide receiver core versus the Bucks secondary, and obviously it's just going to be up to uh, to Jake or Spencer to see if they can take advantage of them and and uh, take advantage of those holes and mismatches. How much are you scheming things differently based on who the quarterback is? Yeah, it's a lot. It really is. I think Kubiak, Coach Kubiak and that offensive staff has probably not got a lot of sleep this week and, and they're trying to find ways. And it's not because they don't think Jake or Spencer is a good player. They're good players. They're just trying to find ways to minimize, make sure they can get some confidence, maybe some early easy throws, some, some easy completions, get their confidence up. Don't put them in position where they can make mistakes early in the game and put the defense behind the eight ball. So the, the offensive staff is, is probably putting in a lot of hours looking for those easy plays, those high percentage plays to give the quarterback some success early in the game and, and build his confidence. And uh, it'll be interesting. But, but like I said, a running game goes a long way to, make, to making the quarterback position a lot easier to play. All right. Well, that's what we're looking for on Sunday. Scott, I thank you so much for giving us a breakdown of the Kansas City game and what's to come this weekend. It's going to be interesting for sure for many reasons. And it is a big, important division game as well. So I appreciate you jumping on the pod. Yeah, absolutely. Appreciate JD and Scott for giving their insight into this past game against Kansas City, upcoming game against Tampa Bay and the quarterback change the Saints turning to the rookie, Spencer Rattler. Continue to follow along all week on NewOrleansSaints.com. We'll be back with another podcast right here, wherever you tune in. And then, of course, we'll get you prepped Sunday. Pre-game show starts at 11 a.m. for that 12 o'clock kick against Tampa Bay. Thanks for tuning in. 
Thanks for listening to the New Orleans Saints podcast. Join us three times per week on NewOrleansSaints.com, the Saints mobile app, or you can download the podcast on iTunes. We'll see you next time right here on the New Orleans Saints podcast.